All right, good morning. This morning, third grade is going to be leading you guys in a chapel about sharing God's strength. Hebrews chapter 11 is nicknamed the faith chapter of the Bible, and it tells about many Old Testament heroes who had great faith that depended on God's strength, not their own, to do mighty things. We're going to take a closer look at four of those heroes whose deeds are mentioned in Hebrews 11, and they are Daniel, Elijah, Joseph, and Moses. Third graders, can you stand up and share that verse with the, class, or with the school here? Ready, go. Who shot the mouth? Sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Hebrews 11, 33-34. Nicely done. Let's take a closer look at each of those Old Testament stories that were mentioned inside that verse. Third graders in the first skit, come on up. Daniel and the lion's den. Who shut the mouths of lions. Daniel was a wise and good worker. The new king rewarded him with an important job. (laughs) He put Daniel in charge of all the kingdom's governors. Well, the governors didn't like that one bit. They hated Daniel because he was the king's favorite. We have to do something to make Daniel look bad, one of them said. He won't worship any other god than his own, said another. Maybe we can use that against him. So the governors all made a terrible evil plan. But for it to work, they needed to trick the king. Your majesty, they went and said, you are so wonderful that we think you should honor yourself. Make a law that everyone in the kingdom must worship you and no one else for the next 30 days. If someone disobeys, he should be thrown into the lions. What a great idea, thought the king. So, he made a law. And signed it. (laughs) When Daniel heard this, he refused to obey. He went to his room. He knelt by the window, and he prayed to God like he always did. The governor saw what Daniel did, and they tattled to the king. made the law and it can't be changed, the men told the king. The king liked Daniel and he didn't want to hurt him, but a law is a law. So he ordered Daniel to be thrown into a pit of roaring lions. The pit was then sealed with a stone. All night long, the king worried and hoped that Daniel could, or Daniel's God could save him. At daybreak, the king got up and ran to the pit. Daniel, he shouted, did your God save you? Yes, Daniel said. (laughs) God sent an angel to protect me. He kept the lions from eating me. The king was so happy, he let Daniel out of the pit. 
and they sent a message to the people. I command everyone in my kingdom to worship and honor the God of Daniel. His power and his kingdom will last forever. In this way, many people from different countries came to know about the one true God. Elijah, come on up. The story of Elijah, who quenched the fury of the flames. Queen Jezebel and King Ahab were bullies. They were mean, mean, mean. The bad king and queen got the Israelites to stop trusting God and start worshiping a god named Baal. The evil, or they even killed some of God's prophets. But the prophet Elijah trusted God with all his heart. I will prove that my God is the only real God. Let's have a contest, he said. Your priests of Baal can offer a sacrifice to your God, and I'll offer sacrifices to mine. The one true God will send fire from heaven and burn up the altar of wood. All the Israelites came to watch. Baal's priests went first. Send fire, Baal, they shouted. But nothing happened. What's wrong, Elijah said. Is Baal sleeping? Is he busy? <laughs> Elijah then laid his sacrifice on the altar. To prove that he wasn't doing anything tricky, he asked the people to soak it with water. Then Elijah prayed, please God, send fire to show that you are the one and only true God. Zap. Fire whooshed down from heaven <laughs> and burnt up the wet altar and Elijah's sacrifice. The Israelites then fell down and worshipped God. Okay. <laughs> Skip three, Joseph. who escaped the edge of the sword. Joseph was one of Jacob's 13 children. Joseph's older brothers disliked him because he tattled. They disliked him even more when their father gave Joseph a colorful new robe. They really disliked him when Joseph said, I have a dream. We were tying bundles of grain and your bundles bowed down to mine, like I was your king. Our king, his brothers wailed. No way. I had another dream, Joseph said. The sun and the moon and the stars, they all bowed down to me. One day, Joseph went to check on his brothers in the fields, and when they saw him, they said, We'll get rid of that dreamer who thinks he's so great. So they conspired against him to kill him with a sword. They said to one another, 
Here comes the streamer. Come now. Let's kill him with our sword and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what becomes of his dreams. So they grabbed Joseph, and they threw him into the well. Later, a group of traitors came along, riding on camels. Where are you going? the brothers asked. To Egypt, the men said. So Joseph's brothers then decided to sell him to the traitors instead. We'll mess up his new robe and tell dad a wild animal killed him. And that is what they did. Number four, Moses. The story of Moses, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Moses lived in the desert of Midian for many years. One day on Mount Horeb, which was the mountain of God, Moses noticed a bush. And it was covered in flames. <laughs> Moses wondered, why isn't this bush burning up? Suddenly, a voice boomed out of the flames. Moses, Moses, do not come any closer. I am the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I have heard the cries of my people, and I am going to rescue them from slavery. Go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses was shaking. <laughs> no, Lord, not me. Who am I to talk to Pharaoh? I am too weak of a speaker. Send somebody else. I will be with you, Moses. Here is a sign to show that I sent you. Throw your staff on the ground and it will turn into a snake. Moses did as God instructed. And a snake slithered on the ground where the staff had been. <laughs> Moses grabbed the snake's tail. And it turned back into a staff again. <laughs> Moses saw God's power, and now Moses was ready to lead God's people. Back in Egypt, the king was mad at himself. What have I done? Where are my slaves? I should not have left the Israelites and let them go free. Go free. He ordered his army to then go after them. The soldiers mounted their horses and their chariots came charging. Thousands of soldiers stormed with their weapons, all of them chasing God's people. The Israelites saw that the Egyptian soldiers were coming and they were afraid. In front of them lay the great Red Sea. Pick up your staff, Moses, God said, and hold it up toward the water. Moses obeyed. The wind rushed. And the sea tore open.
and a dry path of water appeared with walls of water on each side. God's people hurried through until everyone reached the other side. The Egyptians were still chasing them when God slammed the sea shut. Saving his people from the king's soldiers. And the Israelites saying, God is so great that he can make the sea part and save his people. The end. All right. In each of these Old Testament stories, the third graders just shared with us, whose power was shown? Was it the power of Moses? No. Was it the power of Elijah? No. Whose power was shown? God's power. Very good. Whether we are one of the Bible heroes of yesterday or a believer in Jesus today, our strength comes from God, and our victories come through the power of Jesus Christ. Each one of these stories make it clear that even in our weakness and our troubles, God's power is made perfect in weakness. Hebrews 11:33 b through 34 reminds us that the Old Testament heroes who lived before Jesus had victory over their enemies because of their faith in God. Today, our faith in God gives us victory over sin when we believe that he sent his son to die for us and give us eternal life. The Old Testament heroes give us a preview of the ultimate hero, the son of God and the savior of the world, Jesus. Next, I have some song lyrics that your teacher have, or has. So your teacher's going to pass that out. If you're a big chapel buddy, you're going to share with your little chapel buddy. So teachers, can you pass out those song lyrics? And then grown-ups in the back should have them. If not, we got a third grader that's willing to come and give you some. So. All right, as your teachers and Miss Schwartz and Caitlin pass out some song lyrics, um, these lyrics talk about the four stories that we just saw the third graders present to us. And if you notice, the title of the song is called Rulers of the Jungle. If you've been, if you've been in third grade with me before, you might know what the jungle means. Anybody out there know, what is the, what is the jungle? Who knows what the jungle is? Kai, what's the jungle? Yeah, it is our world that's full of sin. It's like a jungle out there. Noah, do you remember? What's the jungle? Exactly. It's the place where all the creepy crawlers are. It's where all the craziness happens. Our world that we live in with sin is like that. But rulers of the jungle, the one in charge of that is who? Who's the true ruler of the jungle? Yeah. God is. Very good. So, Moses, Elijah, Joseph, and Daniel weren't conquerors of the troubles that they faced. They did that through God's strength. So, we're going to sing a little bit about that with the video. Watch with me. i 
All right, who quenched? All right, who shut the mouths of lions? God. Who quenched the fury of the flames? Who helped Joseph escape the edge of the sword? Who was powerful in battle and rerouted the foreign armies? God. May God's strength be felt in you because you all have it too as rulers of the jungle with him working in you. Thank you.